Federal health officials gave a sobering assessment today of where Canada is right now in the pandemic and where we could be heading. As restrictions have been lifted, infections have risen, and they're warning that the health care system could be overwhelmed later this year. Here's a look at how cases could skyrocket this fall if people increase their contacts with others by just 25 percent. The line goes almost straight up, higher than the peak of the wave in April. Dr. Theresa Tam is Canada's chief public health officer. She's in Ottawa. Thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Tam. Is a fourth wave inevitable given the aggressive spread of the Delta variant in Canada right now? Well, I think we have made incredible progress and we see the increase in vaccine coverage and uh, that vaccines are working. So that is still great news, but we are beginning to see some uptick in cases and that's just starting. And when things are just starting, we can do something about it. Um, so the, to the, in today's uh, modeling session, um, I think, you know, we, we are looking at the beginning um, of a, I think a Delta uh, variant driven uh, for wave, but what that trajectory looks like um, depends on um, how fast we can uh, get uh, increase in the vaccine uptake, uh, particularly getting uh, more first doses, but also getting people the second dose. Uh, that's juxtapositioned um, uh, against the race uh, um, of the, the, the variant spreading with increased uh, reopening. So I do think we have to be cautious about um, how we reopen society. Uh, but the modeling um, you know, essentially uh, indicate that um, you know, the, the, the spread, it, it could uh, um, go straight up as it were, as you just described, or uh, it could go much more slowly uh, if we only um, can roll up our sleeves to get vaccinated as well as be precautionary uh, as we are build, still building up that immunity. Uh, Canadians have a lot of fatigue when it comes to COVID. Everyone is sick and tired of the pandemic. And, and as the pandemic drags on, uh, people don't necessarily want to continue with these life disrupting uh, measures uh, because it's been going on so long. They're hoping that as case counts get better, they can get back to normal life. But with this Delta variant, should Canadians this fall once again brace for life disrupting, whether it's shutdowns or other precautionary me measures, should they brace for that? Well, I think um, the difference with this wave is that we have the vaccine and the vaccines are very effective, particularly against severe outcomes. So I think that brings a lot of hope. The projections and some of the models that we're showing is when we lift uh, all these measures, of course, we're going to get increasing cases uh, that might be expected. But the idea and, and all public health um, systems are, are wanting this is that we don't go into blanket lockdowns um, because if we um, have high enough vaccine coverage um, and that we still may continue to take some other measures which are not so difficult because we got used to them, um, that we can prevent uh, any kind of um, you know, blanket lockdowns. Uh, we are probably looking at more localized management of surges in um, cases or outbreaks that do have to be managed, particularly uh, in pockets of under immunization. I think that's what we will see. So in people do have to brace for the fact that if activity goes up in your local area, uh, some of these measures may have to come back into effect, but not looking at, um, you know, blanket lockdowns or these severely restrictive measures. And we can do that by not just vaccination, but keep up with the masking. I mean, that I think people have got used to doing in any case. So uh, keep up with that as just regular practice, particularly indoors. So, you know, while, um, you know, the CDC and, and other data sounds a little alarming because this, this Delta variant is more transmissible, we know actually what to do and how to manage this. So layer on those protection, wear a mask, particularly indoors, even if you're vaccinated, uh, can help uh, suppress some of these uh, transmissions while vaccines, um, um, you know, take effect. 
And uh, so I'm still very hopeful uh, this, that we can um, get back. This is all we, what we want to do uh, is to get back to schools and universities and workplaces uh, by the fall um, through um, vaccines and uh, some sensible regular uh, measures that we should continue with. So I just I, I just want to be clear from your perspective, because we do have that vaccine coverage and serious outcomes, severe outcomes are, are greatly reduced when more people get vaccinated. You're from this standpoint, with all the information we have at this time, you don't anticipate Canadians are going to have to experience those blanket lockdowns again. It's going to be localized dealing from community to community, whatever the local situation is on the ground. Yeah, I think that is the the, the goal. Um, and what we're seeing is, of course, great vaccine coverage in the older age groups and some of the high risk populations, which should help um, reduce the impact on our health system. But what our models are showing is that if the 18 to 39 year olds can actually get vaccinated fully up to at least 80 percent, you can actually avert um, the significant impacts on the health system as well as getting back to some of the things that uh, we really all want to do. What was your reaction this week when you listened to Alberta outline its changing mitigation strategies when it comes to COVID-19, particularly one new thing that uh, uh, following the footsteps of Saskatchewan, uh, no uh, patients who test positive will no longer be required legally to isolate. When you heard that, what was your reaction? Well, I think that we have to be very um, thoughtful and precautionary as we lift measures. And anyone who is tested positive um, should stay home, should isolate. So even if the government isn't mandating it, um, I would suggest that uh, anyone who tests positive should still self-isolate. But what, um, when you and, when you heard that, not to interrupt, when you heard that, you know, what was your reaction? You you are Canada's top doctor. You hear that? What did you think? Well, I think that they know the population most. Uh, but you know, I think um, you know, keeping up with um, isolation of uh, positive cases is a fundamental part of um, of of the management of COVID nineteen uh, at this time. One last thing I want to ask you about. Um, uh, August 9th, uh, we know that uh, the government has made a decision that fully vaccinated Americans will be allowed to cross into Canada for non-essential purposes, non-essential business purposes. Given the spike in cases in the U.S., do you think Cabinet should revisit that decision? Um, I think we will just keep track of the uh, epidemiologic situation um, at this time and we'll keep re-evaluating um, and so, so, you know, some of the parameters that we're looking for is, of course, the domestic situation and whether our projections will show that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting into uh, difficulties with coping with this um, pandemic and also looking, of course, at the uh, international uh, situation. Um, I think it's, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep looking at it, but we're... Um, the first stage is to, or the next stage really, is to only um, um, allow um, fully vaccinated um, um, U.S. citizens. Um, and and um, so, so I think that is actually quite a precautionary approach. And we will still be testing people. Um, we're asking for pre-departure tests as well as uh, post-arrival uh, testing will continue and we'll monitor that data. Uh, in terms of that p test positivity rate and other parameters. And we can certainly adjust if needed. Oh, we have 30 seconds here. I just want to make sure I'm, uh, I'm clear. As long as the precautionary measures are still there, as long as the testing continues, and as long it's, as it's fully vaccinated Americans, uh, you're comfortable with that, the decision where it is, where it stands right now? Where it stands right now, yes. I think we're still on track, uh, but we need to remain vigilant and reassess the situation. Dr. Tam, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.